This is Radio Entrepreneurs, and we're featuring the success of all entrepreneurs. And this week, we're reporting from O'Brien and Levine, court reporting, and we're calling this uh, weekly segment On the Record. And uh, I'm here as my co-host uh, this week, Mark Z from uh, Mark Z Legal Staffing. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Jeff. Great to be here. This is the Super Bowl of uh, uh, <laughs> interviews. As, as you know, how much I enjoy uh, talking to uh, some of the nation's and city's uh, best attorneys. Our first guest is Julia Houston, uh, from a partner at Foley Hogue and also president of the Boston Bar Association. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Thank you, Julia. Why don't you tell us about your practice, what your specialization is? Uh, sure. So I'm an intellectual property lawyer. And what that really means is that I help companies um, realize the value from their patents, trademarks, and copyrights, and also trade secrets. Um, I do that in a couple of ways. Uh, I work with large and small companies, and we help them build portfolios of their IP assets. And we also help them uh, realize the value of those assets in the marketplace. And that's really what it's all about. So I assist companies in enforcing their IP rights and also defending their IP rights. Uh, because ultimately, having a portfolio of IP assets on paper doesn't really do you very much good unless it's actually bringing value, value to your company in some tangible way. Uh, and I'm a partner at Foley Hoag, uh, as you mentioned, and I chair the Trademark, Copyright, and Unfair Competition Practice Group, and I also co-chair the Advertising and Marketing Practice Group, which is very closely tied to trademarks. You know what's interesting is uh, <coughs> when we look at your practice, and whether it's uh, advertising or um, I IP, um, you seem to be in front and center with um, these issues like uh, false advertising. I know you've tried some big cases in these areas. And uh, I know in, um, when you talk about uh, copyright and some of the trademark work, you've really, as you say, you've really defended and uh, prosecuted uh, um, in terms of uh, the different type of trademarks and copyrights. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the type of work that you've done in doing that? Because some of these have been very big cases. Uh, sure. So um, without mentioning any specific client names, right. uh, I can tell you that uh, we have done some advertising work for uh, major consumer product companies, uh, market leaders. Um, I've also done work for you know, very small startups and entrepreneurs, you right. know, which are, I know, your audience for this show. Um, I have done um, significant uh, work for auto companies, uh, for software companies, and also for pharmaceutical companies. Right. So it really, you know, my practice really runs the gamut across all subject areas. And that's one of the things I have to say that I like about practicing in this area. Uh, you know, the issues, the legal issues are always the same. You need to know trademark law, copyright law, et cetera. Uh, but you're working with different clients and there are different industries. And so it makes every case fresh. Well, you know, it's interesting. you seem to be very collaborative. And on one hand, advancing, um, sort of working um, these startups and established companies around the minefield of the federal and the state regulations. And it's very tough as an entrepreneur, our audience, com whether it's compliance or knowing what they need to do with um, their, their patents and trademarks. Um, how did you, um, how'd you decide that this was something that you wanted to pursue? Well, um, I would say that intellectual property is something that I c came into rather by accident. I didn't go to law school deciding to be an intellectual property attorney. I actually thought I was going to be a civil rights attorney. Interesting. Uh, and some of those interests explain why I'm active in the Boston Bar Association, as you mentioned, uh, and some other uh, volunteer causes as well. Uh, but intellectual property is something that I came to do as a lawyer. Uh, I did many different kinds of law in my first few years, and I really liked it. Do you find that f people get scared off from talking to you or f that you're from a bigger firm and you have to work yourself around that as well? That's a little bit hard to say because when people don't come to me, I don't know why they don't come <laughs> to me. <laughs> and the people who do come to me generally don't admit that you know, they have uh, hesitation, uh, although they do frankly ask a lot of questions about budgeting. Um, but, you know, trademark protection and copyright protection also are areas where it does not take a lot of money to establish some rights. And generally for just, you know, a couple thousand dollars, a company can protect its trademark and go through the federal trademark, trademark registration process, assuming that there are no significant obstacles. And IP is an area where you want to spend 
some money up front to secure the rights you need. You don't need to spend a lot of money, but it's an example of an ounce of prevention potentially being worth a pound of cure down the road because if you don't do what you need to do at the beginning uh, and you shortchange your company in the process of protecting its IP, it can cost you much more money down the road.